Welcome back to Deep Review TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here with a short, but I think will be very interesting video for you today. We're looking at two new Panasonic full frame L mount lenses, the 35 millimeter and the 24 millimeter, both F 1.8 primes. But you see, it's not going to be a review today. It's going to be more of a comparison because Jordan and I have already reviewed the Sigma 24 and 35 millimeter F2 L mount prime lenses. And so what we thought we'd do is a comparison between the Panasonic and Sigma versions. We're just going to look at a few criteria and just kind of see which one is best bang for your dollar that you should get for your new L mount full frame. Let's take a look at these two. We've got a very common thread here. I mean, the Panasonics are a third stop brighter as a lens, but they're plastic construction and they're definitely much lighter. The Sigmas are heavier lenses, but they've got beautiful metal construction. I like the metal hoods. Everything is really, really well built and they just exude quality and class when you look at them. I do like that the Sigmas have aperture rings on there, really nice. And I also like the autofocus manual focus switch on the Sigma's better. It just feels more positive. The manual focus ring on the Sigma is metal and it's really well dampened. But the Panasonic manual focus ring is easy to find and it's actually got a nice dampened feel to it as well. Now you might think then, oh, well the Sigma seem to be just better built, higher quality lenses, but there is design behind the lighter weight on the Panasonics. For example, the 24, the 35, the 50, and the 85 1.8s are all roughly the same size and weight, and they all have the same 67 millimeter filter diameter. And this is absolutely ultra convenient if you're putting these on gimbals and you don't wanna to have to rebalance them in a big way every time you change lenses. Plus, of course, you get to use the same filters. So there's definitely method behind that design. Now, as you can probably see by the light on my face and the heavy squinting, uh, we've got a nice bright sun today, but it's good for flare tests. So shot four samples here in the bridge, and this is gonna be an easy one. All four lenses, 24 and 35s, basically handle flare really well. You know, even stop down, we're not getting any heavy ghosting or reflections, uh, you know, nothing like a big loss of contrast. I think all four of these lenses handle flare quite well. All right, now it's time for our macro comparison. We've got a little heart-shaped rock here, our love letter to you, our viewers, because we love you guys very much. We're gonna start with 24 millimeters. Now, both the Panasonic and Sigma have basically the same uh, distance from our minimum subject to flange distance. It's 0.24 meters. However, you'll notice that the Sigma does get us just a little bit closer, a little bit better magnification. Now we take a look at 35 millimeters. It's a little bit more clear cut. The Sigma 35 millimeters minimum focusing distance is 0.27 meters. The Panasonic 0.24. So the Panasonic can physically get us closer. It does also have the better magnification. So for close ups, the 35 millimeter Panasonic does a slightly better job. All right, so we want to test the speed of the autofocusing motors on all four lenses. Now keep in mind again, this is a Panasonic. We can't hook up the Ninja to show you visually how it's autofocusing because it slows the whole thing down. So you're just gonna have to trust me and go by the sound of the beeps. Now first, the 24 millimeters, nice and snappy on both Panasonic and Sigma versions from near to far. We had no issues, very quick. We went to the 35 millimeters. We actually noticed on both lenses, sometimes it would go right to the background quickly from close focus, but sometimes it would halter a little bit, slow down a little bit, second guess, and then go. But the important thing is both 35 millimeters from Panasonic and Sigma focused with the same speed and snappiness. And again, we're not evaluating the bodies focusing here on the Panasonic S5, just the motor speed on all four lenses, and I would say they're basically identical. For our next test, we decided to look at LOCA, Longitudinal Chromatic Aberration. That's where you get the color fringes in the foreground and background out of focus areas. Because this is important, it's hard to get rid of in post. So the better a lens is, the better your time will be afterwards. Now we found these little dots here, the sun was hitting them just right, so I did a test on all four lenses. So first off, when it comes to the 24 millimeters, we actually found the Sigma to have a little bit less LOCA than the Panasonic. Uh, again, both very minor though, and I'd have no problem using either one. When we looked at the 35 millimeters, it was the exact opposite. We actually found that the Panasonic 35 actually did a little bit better when it came to LOCA over the Sigma. But again, both very minor, both very manageable. Overall, all four lenses handle LOCA quite well. All right, let's evaluate breathing next on all four lenses. Just as a reminder, breathing is where as you focus the lens from closest focus to infinity and back again, you may see the frame zoom in and zoom out. And this is not a desirable trait, especially when you're doing video and you wanna do nice manual focus pulls. Let's take a look at the 24 millimeters. The Sigma breathes and quite noticeably here, you can see the edges of the frames changing. When we look at the Panasonic 24 millimeter, there's basically no breathing to speak of. So this would be excellent for doing focus pulls in video. Now looking at the 30 35 millimeters here. The Sigma 35 millimeter actually breathes quite a bit. You can see it here. Now we look at the Panasonic, it's also breathing, but a little bit less than the Sigma. So I would give the win to the Panasonic 35 millimeter there. Overall, both wins go to Panasonic. 
Look what COVID pandemic has done to our live performance stages, but they do make a great place to store your shopping cart, your malt liquor, and a random log out of the river. Anyways, let's talk about sharpness on these lenses. I'm going to start with the 35 millimeters. Now, first off, looking about the Sigma and the Panasonic wide open, the Panasonic at 1.8, the Sigma at F2, the Sigma sharper, how you can see it. And actually, I was quite surprised by how much sharper the Sigma also is in the corners wide open. The Panasonic is quite soft. When we stop both lenses down to F4, Four, both lenses get better, but again, the Sigma still is sharper than the Panasonic. And the corners on the Panasonic still need work, even at F4. Now let's take a look at the 24 millimeters. And actually both the Sigma and the Panasonic shooting wide open, focused on the center. You can see both centers are basically identical and actually very impressive. But when you go to the corners wide open, it's a similar story to the 35s. The Sigma holds up in the corners better. The Panasonic, you can see actually really soft and blurry wide open. And we stop down to F4. The Sigmas again still stay consistent, but the Panasonics are still kind of soft and blurry. They just never get really sharp corners out of them. So in conclusion, these are our standout differences. The Sigma lens are just optically sharper lenses. They're also infinitely sexier looking. They're actually a little bit more affordable too, dramatically so when we look at the 24 millimeters. So for photography, I'd go the Sigmas, but the Panasonics are lighter weight, they balance better on video rigs, and they have better breathing characteristics. And when you look at sharpness on the Panasonics, for video, if I'm shooting high def for 4K, the sharpness isn't that big a deal. Although if we do go to 5.9K video, it actually would have some impact there. However, those soft corners, they're gonna largely get cropped out when you go to 16 by nine in video as well. So it just seems like the Panasonic are better suited for video application. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate that. And do keep in mind that we now have sample galleries for all four lenses. You can see those on deepreview.com. Links in the description below. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.